so we're live. All right, we are live. We are ready to go. Welcome everyone to Liver Jeopardy. Hello, hello. We'll give everybody a few more minutes just for some people who might just be joining. We'll let everybody come on in, um, take some time, let people log in. Welcome to Liver Jeopardy. Hello, happy Thursday. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Nicolette Iliano, and I'm the National Manager of Events at ALF. With me tonight, we have Elise Jackson, who is also the National Manager of Events at ALF, and we have our National Manager of Support Services, Warren Hall. We are in week four of the Virtual Liver Life Walk, and this week focuses on liver education and is generously sponsored by our friends at Bristol Myers Squibb. So we have a super fun game of Liver Jeopardy planned for tonight, and we're really going to test your liver knowledge. So get ready, we're super excited. We have three of our amazing virtual Liver Life Walk team captains that will be tonight's Liver Jeopardy contestants. And I'm gonna give them a minute to introduce themselves shortly. But first I wanna remind you that tonight's event is interactive. So make sure that you're playing along by writing your answers to each of the questions in the comment section of the video. And Elise is gonna be monitoring the comments and giving some special shout outs throughout the night. Hey, also, Gina. Oh, Gina's on, hi, Gina's, Gina's here. <laughs> I also wanna remind everyone that we're asking for a $10 suggested donation for tonight's event. And you can donate directly to your personal or team fundraising page if you're a walker. And if you're joining us and you're not registered for the walk, then we ask that you make a donation to one of tonight's three contestants. So we're going to post their team fundraising pages in the comment section, and you can choose who, would, who you would like to donate to tonight. These funds are crucial to the organization at this time. So please consider donating to support tonight's amazing contestants and team captains. Now, I know everyone is super excited and ready to go, so let's get to it. I'd like to introduce our first contestant to tell you a little bit more about herself from Team Sophie. It's Sophie Hansen. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Sophie, and I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I was diagnosed with primary sclerosing cholangitis and autoimmune hepatitis when I was three years old. And when I was 11, I was placed on the liver transplant list. And about two and a half years ago on December 31st, 2017, I received a liver transplant. Um, now, because of my amazing donor, I am a pre-med student at the University of Utah, and I'm hoping to go to medical school in the future. Um, this is my second year participating in the walk, and I've been volunteering with ALF for about a year. And they're such an incredible organization. And I'm so excited for this amazing night tonight. And I hope you guys have fun. Yay, thank you so much, Sophie. Thank you for being here with us. Your story is so incredibly inspiring. We're so happy to have you here and so grateful for your participation. Nicolette, before we continue, I just want to give a special shout out to Don. He is one of our team captains from the Cincinnati area. He just checked in. Hey, Don. Thank you for hey, being Hey, Don. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Love it. I love to see everybody joining in. It's so great to have everyone here with us tonight. So our next contestant is the team captain of um, Charlie's Cancer Cure Seders. And I'd like to introduce uh, Kira Reinhardt's husband, Mark. Kira will be joining us shortly. So Mark and Kira are going to tag team it tonight. So Mark, take it away. Yeah, hi, I'm Mark, like you said, from Charlie's Cancer Cure Seders. Uh, we're from outside Philadelphia. And we got involved with the Liver Life Walk uh, this will be our third year participating. Uh, we got involved, Kira's dad, uh, father passed away from liver, liver cancer. And, uh, you know, after that, Kira found this organization and we were super excited to become a part of it. Uh, it's something our family looks forward to every year, participating and getting together to remember and honor uh, her father and, and, you know, get to work with all of you guys. Uh, we're really excited to be here tonight. I'm a little intimidated that Sophie's pre-med over here 
uh, I did some quick like Googling and, and some researching. So we'll see how my Google skills hold up with that, but uh, super excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, we're so happy to have you and what an incredible way, you know, to honor Kira's father, Charlie, and your team just goes above and beyond every year. And we're so grateful. So thanks for being here and good luck tonight. And now I'd also like to introduce our final team captain. She's the team captain of Team Love for Linda. I'd like to introduce Karen Pinto. Hi, everybody. Um, this is I'm Karen, and I'm the captain of Team Love for Linda. Love for Linda honors my mom. <laughs> and this is the second time we've participated in the Liver Life Walk. The first time was back in 2007, and then got involved again this year and really hope to continue um, in the future. I live in West Lafayette, Indiana, and the first time we did the Liver Life Walk, it was in um, Cleveland, Ohio at the Cleveland Zoo. So this year, our Liver Life Walk virtually will be here in my neighborhood in West Lafayette, Indiana, home of Purdue, uh, the Boilermakers, in case there's anybody out there who's, who's uh, fans of them. Um, anyway, um, fun, looking forward to, to playing tonight and it looks like I have some great contestants. Uh, so we're gonna have a lot of fun and raise, and raise some money for our teams and for the foundation. Karen, you're getting a lot of love in the um, chat right now. Gretchen Potts says, you can do this, Karen. Let's go, love for Linda. Kelly said, thank you for sharing your story. Gina sends heart. So we, all three of you are just amazing. And we're just so thankful That's that awesome. you're here with us. Oh, so great. My heart is so full and so warm. You guys are the reasons why we do what we do. So we can't thank you enough for being here with us tonight. And now... I'd like to introduce the man of the hour. I know you've all been waiting for this. Our very own Alex Trebek for the evening. We have Warren Hall as our host. Let's get started and pass that liver oh, knowledge. Warren. I hope everybody is ready. Woo, I hope everybody is ready. I'm Warren Hall. I'm coming to you live from the Liver Jeopardy Studios high above 39 Broadway in New York City. We have spared no expense in constructing this set here just specifically for tonight's Liver Jeopardy. Now listen, I know over the past few weeks, I know you've, you've had yoga, um, and I, I know that you, you did some cooking. I think you made Cheerios and things like that. Very nice. Uh, then you had something like family fun night. No clue what that's all about. But tonight, tonight is what you're here for. And we are going to play some intense liver jeopardy. Now, I just want to say that um, in full disclosure, okay, our contestants tonight uh, did not see any of the questions that we are about to uh, have them respond to. Um, now, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we may regret that. However, the contestants have not seen the questions. They do not know what to expect. Although I will say that yesterday, Karen called me and she offered me a gift card to the Gap if I would just send her a few of this evening's questions. And I said, Karen, I'm a man of integrity. Had you said a gift card for the Apple store, then perhaps we could have played here, okay? But, uh, but just so you know that nobody has the answers to tonight's questions, I, I hope I do. However, um, part of my job at the American Liver Foundation, I'm a national manager of support services, and the, the most important element of that for me is that I get to oversee our national, or I should say international helpline. People contact us from literally around the world and with their questions about liver disease and, and liver wellness and, and, and seeking resources. And I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to play that role uh, here at ALF and to be able to directly uh, uh, interact with those folks. And that's why your donations and, and all the things that you do for the uh, American Liver Foundation helps us to keep the, the helpline going and helps us to continue uh, to do this good work that uh, all of us uh, are here tonight doing and that we're all tonight raising the funds over these few weeks to do that. 
Okay. So now, having said all of that, Lauren, before yes. we get started, we have two very special guests that I cannot let us continue without shouting out. So right now, um, we have Michael Kerr, who Ooh. is on our Ooh. national board. Thank you so much for being here right now. And also with us is David Ticker, who is the chief financial Yay. officer of the American Liver Foundation. So thank you so much, Michael and David, for joining us today. Woo! And David Ticker, I just say so you know, I think if I do this well, I think there could be a little promotion, maybe a little, uh, <laughs> maybe there could be a little, a little raise in Alex Trebek's uh, salary in the coming year. Just saying, just putting that out there. All right, enough of this silliness. Let's get on with this evening's challenge of liver jeopardy. And here are today's categories. The first. Liver 101, second, liver diseases, treatment and cures, patient support, and about ALF, and nutrition and nutrition. So those are our categories here. So I, I flipped a three-headed coin earlier today. And so we're going to give Kira the first shot here now. Uh, now, now, Kira, now you cannot consult. This is not, you know, phone a friend here, okay? Phone a husband, okay? So uh, anyway, so I'm going to let you uh, choose tonight's first category. <laughs> Let's do liver 101 for 300. Okay. And the question, you know your liver <laughs> because it looks like one of these. You know your liver. A football. The, what a, is a football. football. Yes, Ooh. that's it. Woo woo. A football. Way to go. And we are on a roll. Listen to that crowd. We have millions of people tuning in from around the world, and, and you can hear them just as they uh, cheered for you there because you knew that the liver looks like a football. Okay, so next we're going to go to Karen. Karen, let's see if we can keep this momentum going. Okay, um, I think I will choose um, liver diseases for 200. Liver diseases for 200. Why is fatty liver dangerous? Why is fatty liver dangerous? Mm -hmm. Why do you think, why do you think a little fat around the liver is going to be a little problematic for somebody? Because it makes your liver work harder? Yes, yes, it makes your liver work harder. It smothers your liver. It irritates it. If you think of your liver as a nice squishy sponge, that's a filter. And now there's all that ugly fat around it. It smothers it. It irritates it, therefore creating problems in the liver's functioning. So excellent. Good for you. Yes, it creates problems for the liver's functioning. Woo woo. Listen to the crowd. Listen to the crowd. Okay, Sophie, Sophie, now let's go here, Sophie. Let's see a lot of pressure on you now because of your studies. So here we go. All right, let's do treatment and cures for 300. Ooh, treatment and cures for 300. What do, what do liver function tests, AKA LFTs measure? Um, liver function tests measure how well your liver is working and Ooh. the different enzymes that the liver makes. And yeah, some examples would be AST, ALT, GGT. <laughs> wow, MOUSE. Yeah, no, MOUSE is definitely not one of the liver function tests. But yes, the liver enzyme levels. And you know, if you want to understand this, if you, if you think of a car's exhaust, right? A car has, no matter... Even though the most primed engine always is going to have exhaust, you see, uh, if you see a car that's blowing a lot of hot uh, black smoke, you know, there's something wrong with the engine. Well, the reason we use LFTs, liver function tests for enzymes, is because by natural working, there's always going to be liver enzymes. 
But if your liver is working harder than it needs to, those numbers are going to be way elevated. And so that's why the first approach to checking on your liver health is to check the LFTs. Good for you, Sophie. That All that money you're paying for that school is paying off already. So I'm sure your, your, your parents must be very proud. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go back to Kira. Kira, let's see where we go next. Um, liver 101 for 200. Liver 101 for 200. The liver produces bile. What does bile do? <laughs> what does bile do? <laughs> what do you think it does? Food, I don't know. It helps break down stuff. Because it, it helps break down <laughs> like food and uh, yes. things that you eat. Yeah. Boom. That's exactly what bile does. What bile <laughs> does is it helps with our digestion. And so you see the, the liver produces bile and that bile is acid and that goes into our stomach. It goes into uh, our intestines and it helps with the breakdown uh, of the food that we eat. Uh, biliary, right? If you hear anything to do with biliary, it means bile and that's the, the what's being produced by the liver. So very good. Yes, bile helps with our digestion. Without it, we just sit there. Okay, so we're Sorry, moving right along. We wow, these contestants are good. It, 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 they're, they're doing very well here tonight. So, um, all right, so let's go. Let's move on to Karen now. Karen, Karen let's before go. we move on, I yes. just want to give a shout out to Ashley Cook. She is in the chat. She is a team captain of Ashes Warriors. Thank you so much for being here. Woo, all right, let's hear for the Warriors. Yes, way to go. Woo, thanks you're, for joining with us. us. We hope your whole team is with us. Woo, woo. And don't forget all you millions of people tuning in for $10 donation, you could help one of these teams or even your own team tonight. So don't forget, you can uh, donate to any of the folks that are playing here in the teams to, to help keep this, uh, this momentum going. All right, so Karen, let's go with your, your next selection. Um, how about liver nutrition for 300? Okay, liver nutrition for 300. Hydration is important, but what beverages does the liver not enjoy? What beverages does the liver not enjoy? I would say they do not enjoy mm -hmm. alcohol. The liver does not enjoy alcoholic beverages. Okay. All right. And that is indeed one of the answers. Yes. But we'll say excessive alcohol. Okay. Ex excessive sure. alcohol. The liver doesn't like sodas. It doesn't like sugary juices and all those things because all of that can over time can eat away at the, at the liver and create problems for us. So although we need hydration, we need water to keep us going. We have to be really careful about certain things we drink because they can indeed be a problem for our liver. Very good, Karen. Excellent, excellent. Thank okay, you. so let's move on to so oh, oh, pause there. All right. So let's move on to Sophie. Sophie, what is your next selection? Um, let's do about ALF for 300. About ALF for 300. We all want nice pillows to rest upon. ALF rests upon these pillars. ALF rests upon these pillars. What's um, the, what would you I say? I think education, advocacy, and research. Woo, woo, yes, yes, yes. All of those things, yes. Education, we do advocacy. As a matter of fact, all last week, we were doing advocacy down in Washington, D.C. Well, we weren't really there, but we were making calls to all of our re representatives offices and we were asking them, encouraging them to make sure that they vote uh, to help people with their prescription medications and to, to keep the CDC and the NIH uh, with funding they need in order to do research to help those with liver disease. So yeah, education, advocacy, support services and research are all the things that ALF rests upon. Okay, terrific, Sophie. Now let's go back over to Kira. Kira, make your selection. We're going to do liver 101 for 400. Liver 101 for 400. What are two characteristics of the liver that make it different from all the other organs? 
two characteristics of the liver that make it different from all the other organs. I don't know. We failed that one too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, guess. Take a guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. oh, sorry. Sorry. Does anyone else want to take a guess at that? So let's see, Karen, Sophie, you want to take a guess at what are two characteristics that make the liver different from all other organs? I'll take a guess at one of them. Okay. That the liver can um, regenerate when yes, because uh, one it of the can ways, regenerate. And, yeah, and what's the, the other? The others related to it. Yeah. Um. Okay, so it can regenerate, and. Oh, shoot. Okay, well. I don't know that, another one, though. Maybe that's Sophie. Okay. Sophie, do you know the other one? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's the biggest okay. organ inside your body, but I don't yeah. know if that's the answer. <laughs> okay. Well, the answer is yes, that the liver can regenerate itself. It can also heal itself. So, so throughout our lives, you know what? We're really beating up our the, the liver. We're really because of what we're eating, because of the things we're drinking. And, and the liver is so great because throughout our lives, it can heal itself and it can regenerate itself. Um, and, and that's an important factor of our liver because, you know, we just have one of them. And so therefore, even though we give it a hard time, it's still able to do that. However, we have to be careful because over time, that healing and regenerative ability of the liver can begin to fade. And so we don't want to, we don't want to push it too hard. So, uh, but that is what makes, I think what makes the liver such a fascinating organ because it can heal itself and it could regenerate itself. Great. Good job. Good job. All right. So let's go back to Kira. Let's, let's go, let's give Kira another shot at this. Uh, Kira, why don't you make another selection? Mm, liver diseases for a hundred. Okay, liver disease for 100. Instead of seeing red, if you get this liver disease, you will be seeing Jaundice. yellow. Jaundice. Jaundice. Jaundice, yay! Woo! Yes, yes, you have redeemed yourself, Kira. You redeemed yourself. Jaundice. Jaundice is that yellowing, you know, the, when the liver is damaged, uh, it, it's, it's producing that bile, but it's, it's messing it up, how much we need. And with the breakdown of the red blood cells, and what happens is that creates a, a yellowish looking um, solution that then goes throughout our body. And we see it in our skins, we see it in our eyes. That's when we see that, we know that somebody has a, a challenge with their liver. So jaundice, very good. Excellent, excellent, Kira. Good way to come back there. All right, Karen, are you ready for another selection here? Let's do it. Sure. Um, let's try liver nutrition for 400. Nutrition for 400. Okay, and here's the question. Your body needs protein for this reason. Your body needs protein. What does protein do for us? Well... Makes you feel less hungry. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. It helps your muscles heal. Yes. Like after exercise. Yes. Yep. Um. Uh, I'm, I'm missing something. That's a, no, no. You got it right. You got it right. Oh, so great. The reason why our body needs protein is because it builds and repairs tissue mostly muscle tissue. It helps to build and repair ourselves. And you were right before too, that uh, protein gives us that feeling of fullness so that we don't overeat or we don't eat uh, more than we need to. So very good. Yes, that is the importance of protein uh, in our health and specifically in our liver health. Great. I hope all of Karen's friends out there are rooting her on. I, could, I can almost hear them now. I could see that chat exploding uh, with all those who are out there pushing for Karen. Great job. Okay, Sophie. Okay, recess is over for you, Sophie. Now let's get back <laughs> to it now and let's check uh, what you're going to choose next. All right, let's do treatment and cures for 400. Treatment and cures for 400. Oh. Drugs like Maverick and Epclusa can cure this. 
Maverick and Eppclusa, you've probably seen them all on the television all the time, interrupting our favorite TV shows. What do you think drugs like Maverick and Eppclusa can cure? I have no idea, but I'm going to guess maybe hepatitis of some sort. Okay. Hepatitis C? Hepatitis C, yes, <laughs> yes, you got it right, yes. There was, there was a time when, when if you had hepatitis C and you were trying to cure it, years ago, you would be on medication. It was almost like chemotherapy. You were on it for months and months, and it made you feel lousy, and in some cases, it didn't work. And now these new medications that have come out over the past few years, 8 to 12 weeks, just like we see on many of those ads, 8 to 12 weeks eradicating uh, hepatitis C. So, yeah, so great job on that. Great job. That's what those drugs uh, help us to do. All right, Kira, here we go. Come on, Kira, now here we go. Let's let's make a selection. All right, we're going to do liver 101 for 100. Okay, liver 101 for one. Because of its location in the body, the liver is protected by this. Uh, your rib cage. Yes, correct. The rib cage. Yes, our, our liver is located right underneath that left side rib cage. It, it protects it and it keeps us, uh, if, if we fall, if we have an accident, or for some other reason, the rib cage is there to protect it, just like it protects our heart and protects our lungs as well. So great job, great job, the rib cage. So, so that's good. You guys knew it looked like a football and you knew where it's located. All right, excellent. There we go. You got the basics there. Warren, I want to get started. I just wanted to give an update of where we are regarding points. Yes, Elise, please. Elise and I are on the same page. Ah! Go ahead, Elise. <laughs> <laughs> so Kira is at 600 points. Karen is at 1,300 points, and Sophie is in the lead with 1,400 points so far. Right, you ooh. guys are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, woo, all right, all right. Okay, it's close. We we have ourselves a uh, we have ourselves a contest here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, all right. So, Karen, I think uh, was that at uh, least. We have any more announcements? Uh, anything else? Anybody say hello to us out there? Yes, so we actually do have a team out here. So Francesca Castro. So we have a few people, if you've been seeing in the chat, from USJ-NCPA. They are strong in our comments. We might have 10 to 12 people right here right now. So um, thanks for joining us, thank guys. Them for joining us. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Great. Hey, you know, I think we may have some future Liver Jeopardy contestants out there, I'm sure. I, I'm sure everybody is just jealous of Kira, Karen, and Sophie because they wish they were here uh, in their seats. So uh, maybe <laughs> next time we may have some contestants out there. So so let's keep them in mind for the future. Woo, all right. So uh, Karen, I think you're up next, Karen. Hi, let's, um, let's show the category of patient support some love. It looks like we haven't touched that one yet. Um, yeah. Let's try patient support for 200. Okay, patient support. Let's see if this category shows you some love, Karen. Let's see here now. Okay, so how can I find support groups for patients with liver disease? How can I find support groups for people who have liver disease? What would you think, Karen? Well, you can def definitely contact the, a the American Liver Foundation. You can talk to your doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe at your local hospital, there might be some support networks there, but um, yep, that would be my answer. Excellent. And that is the right answer. You can come to the ALF website where we have our support groups listed. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, the uh, Inspire, which is an online community that you can uh, contact for that, or you can call us directly on our helpline and, and myself or one of our other helpline specialists will be able to guide you to to where are good support groups that, that you or a loved one might need to help you through some challenging times. So great job, Karen, great job on knowing that one there. You, you did indeed give that category some love. So good job, good job. All Thank right, you. next, Sophie, let's see, if, uh, this, let's see if the big board's gonna give you some love here, girl, let's go. All right, let's do about ALF for 400. Okay, about ALF for 400. In supporting ALF, you can walk, run, 
and eat at all of these. What are these called? Uh, what are these called? I do not know. Sure you do. What are uh, these called? A park? <laughs> <laughs> no, what are what are what what are the walks? What are the runs? What are the culinary events? Oh well, the the week the events that you guys hold every week. <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. We call these our signature events, and and you are playing, and all of you are playing a very important role in in this signature event, which is our Liver Life Walk. So a little different this year, of course, as we know, but the Liver Life Walk is definitely one of our signature events. I also want to give a shout out to our uh, Cuisine for a Cause that's coming up. Cuisine for a Cause is going to be a great event where uh, when you sign up for that, we're going to send you all the makings for a couple of delicious meals to your home. Uh, and then you're going to tune in with us and we're going to have some outstanding chefs who are going to walk you through how to set up those meals and how to cook them and how to enjoy them along with a lot of other surprises and a lot of fun. So that's coming up next month in November. So please go online and check out the Cuisine for a Cause because that's where we, uh, again, it's one of our signature events and it helps us uh, to do what it is and to fund all the things that we do. So great job, great job with that one there, Sophie. All right, so we're back to Kira now. Kira, pick from the board, please. Do um, liver distress. Liver diseases. diseases. Um, 400. For 400. For 400. All right. So listen, You're this is big. a team. We have team Kira going here. <laughs> and so let's see for 400. Let's see what the question is. Oh, speaking of cuisine, <laughs> if I get this type of viral hepatitis, I'll need to ask the chef what was in the food. If I get this type of viral hepatitis, I'm going to ask the chef what was in the food. What do you think that is? Is it hepatitis B? Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's see, Karen, Karen, do you know which of the viral hepatitis, if you get it, you're going to ask the chef what was in the food? Um, it's hepatitis A. Hepatitis A is exactly right. Hepatitis A is exactly right. And we can get that if we, if we eat something or drink something that has contaminants in it. Usually it's associated with food and beverage. You know, that's why if you've been in a restaurant and when you go in, the sign says employees must wash their hands. Well, this is why employees must wash their hands. However, now we know these days, all of us are doing that. But anyway, hepatitis A. All right. Good job. Good job. Karen. All right. So, Sophie, we are quickly back to you. So, uh, so pick another category for us. Okay, let's do liver diseases 500. Ooh, all right, we're going to the big shots at the bottom of the board. Okay, so Superman was the man of steel, but if copper is your problem, then you probably have this. Superman was the man of steel, but if copper is your problem in your liver, you probably have this. What is it, Sophie? Um, I think it might be Wilson's disease. Yes, yes. That education is paying off. All that money that you're paying for that medical school is paying off because you got that right. That is Wilson's disease. Good job for you. See, that's why that was in that $500 category. Then you scoop that up really, really very well. All right, good job, good job. All right, not many clues left on the board here. So uh, Kira, let's go, let's see what we can do here. Um, we're gonna go with liver nutrition for 200. Okay, liver nutrition for 200. And the question is, oh, here's a good one. I love this question. I love this question. Why is healthy pooping important? Why is, is healthy pooping important? What would you say to that, Kira team? Team Kira, what would you say to that? And then you get all the bad stuff out. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Is, that kid, is that kid in medical school? <laughs> is, that, is he in medical school yet? Is he a classmate of Sophie? Because Not he's yet. exactly right. Health, healthy pooping is very important for us because it removes toxins 
and it keeps our intestines healthy. So yes, that's why pooping is important. And, and you know, if there's, a, if there's a problem with your poop, there's probably a problem with your digestive system and could be possibly pointing at some liver disease. And so that's why, that's why <clears throat> checking out your poop might seem pretty crappy thing to do. However, uh, it's very important for your health and you should do that. Good job there, Team Kier, on knowing why healthy pooping is important. All right, Karen, I'm glad you didn't get the pooping question, I guess. So uh, why, <laughs> why don't you choose, please? Um, let's go back to patient support, um, Warren. Let's go back to patient support for uh, 400. All right, patient support for 400. I'm not a nurse, but I do love to cook. How can I use this skill to help my spouse who has liver disease? Even though I'm not a nurse, I love to cook. How can that help my spouse who has liver disease? Uh, um, I do love to cook. Well, why would why would being a good cook be helpful to someone who has liver disease? Um, because then you're going to choose the you know healthy foods and um, healthy cooking methods, like you know not frying foods. Right. Um, yes. Baking, I, baking foods instead of frying. Um, this is a little tricky. Yeah. No, you got it. You got it. The answer here is is just what you said. The important. There are multiple <laughs> answers to, <laughs> to this question. And, and yes, it, because you know when it comes to our liver and when it comes to liver disease, nutrition is a treatment. Sometimes people, after they've seen the doctor and they have liver disease and the doctor may not have given them a, a, med a prescription for medication, the doctor may have said, well, there's no procedures we can do, but the doctor will tell you to watch your diet, be really careful what you're eating. You see that nutrition is the treatment when it comes to liver disease. And, and so people, not only is that important if we want our liver to be healthy and not have to get to a uh, disease, but it's also important in treating it because uh, as we have discussed, you know, there are some uh, liver diseases that can actually be reversed. That's because our liver has that regenerative, regenerative ability. And so nutrition is the very thing that can help our liver to do that. So great job on that. You, you know that. Uh, Karen, do you like to cook? I do, actually. I, I did participate last week in the virtual cooking the, with the pasta, and it was really fun. Okay. Yeah. But that wasn't as fun as this is tonight though. Oh no. So, right? that was, is, yeah. No, no. Yeah. That was last week's thing. Yeah. This no, no. Winter. Right. It's well, the well of the month so far, Karen, I hope a lot of people like yourself who like to cook are going to get on board with that uh, cuisine for a cause coming up in a few weeks. So, oh, we're uh, definitely, my household is definitely going to do that. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Well, well, listen, send me your address. I'll come over and I'll enjoy some of that food as well. So, because I don't cook, uh, I, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't do that thing. So, um, okay, <laughs> let's move right along. Sophie, Sophie's been sitting there quiet for a little while. Now, let's see if, uh, if Sophie can show this board some love. Okay, let's do liver diseases 300. Okay, well, this is going to close out this category. Sophie, how do I even know if I have liver disease? How do I even know if I have liver disease? Well, symptoms would be jaundice or ascites or itching, and then you would get additional liver function tests and biopsies and MRIs to figure out for sure. Now, now Sophie, let me ask you a question. You mentioned the word ascites. Now, uh, our viewers may not know what ascites is. Can you tell us what ascites is? Ascites is the buildup of fluid in the abdomen. Right. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So, so one of the things that can be an indication of liver disease is that we begin to have a fluid buildup uh, in our abdomen and in our legs. And, that, and that's certainly one of the, one of the signs. So great job. You answered that question. You even did a bonus answer to that uh, for which there are no points. So, so there are no points. You did a great job on that bonus question. However, you zero. Okay. Zero for that. All right, so Team Kira, now come on, let's go. We want to, we want to move along here. Liver okay. 101 for 500. Liver 101 for 500. Okay, this is going to close out this category. Liver. Oh, the liver does not alert us that it's hurting because it doesn't have these. 
Nerve. Yeah, nerve. nerve. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's right. The liver does not have any nerve endings. And you know, this is a good thing because like we were saying before, how, how we beat up our liver throughout our lives and thankfully it's healing itself and it's regenerating itself. And But we don't feel any of that because there's no nerve endings. However, once that begins, with the liver begins to lose that ability, uh, the problem is that we don't know it. And so therefore, because there's no nerve endings, we may not feel anything. That's why with liver disease, you got to be screened. You got to go to the doctor and get a liver disease screening because if you wait to have symptoms such as the fluid buildup and the jaundice, you've waited too long. And so therefore, because there's no nerve endings, you got to be proactive about your liver health and you got to go get screened uh, every year to make sure that there's nothing going on that you might not be aware of. That's why liver disease often is called the silent disease because we don't even know it. Great job to Team Kira on answering that question. All right, so we have a few minutes left here. Let's keep going. Karen, why don't you make a selection? Okay, um, I'm gonna choose, um, oh wow, do I go, go big? Treatment and cures? Um, sure, why not? Treatment and cures for 500. You know, I always say go big or go home. So good for you, Karen. Here we go. In autoimmune hepatitis, your body is mistakenly attacking its own liver. This category of medications seeks to prevent that. Ah, uh, shoot. Karen, please don't use foul language on I did webinar. not. Okay, all true? right. I thought you were going back to the poop question there for a second. Okay, in autoimmune hepatitis, your body's mistakenly attacking its own liver but this category of medications seeks to prevent this. What do you think they're called? Um, I'm gonna get, take a wild guess. And if I lose, I lose um, uh, anti-inflammatories. Okay, that's very anti, that's good. Okay, uh, let's see, Sophie, do you know what the uh, category is called? I think they're anti-rejection medications. Oh. Okay, and there's another way to say it. One more time, uh, Team Kira, do you know what that's actually called? Yeah. What do you want to say? <laughs> just say it, just Steroid? say it. I don't know. Are they steroids? Nope, nope. Autoimmune suppressants. <gasps> now, let me just say, all of you were right. Okay, all those things that you're anti-inflammatory, all those things that you guys said are right. But Alex wants to be precise here. And so autoimmune suppressant. Let me let me check with the judges and let me just see uh, if they'll accept that. If they'll... Oh, no. Okay, the judge here, uh, Liveracci says that, yes, we're going to accept all of those answers. And so everybody will get points for that one, for that question. Good job, everybody. Good job. All right, so, so let's go right back to Karen. Karen, why don't you make another selection? Okay, um, how about, um, let's go back to patient support for 300. Patient support for 300. How does ALF support patients? How does ALF support patients? Well, uh, one way they support patients is by having the, the line that they can call in and talk, talk to you and your colleagues. Yep. Um, what else do we do? Well, um, they go to like, like, like going to Washington DC and advo and advocating. Yes, for, exactly. Um, exactly. For better funding for um, research. Right. Okay. Um, I think, me... I think you've nailed it. I think you nailed Okay. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think you got it there. In many ways that ALF supports our patients is with our helpline, educational programming, webinars, support groups, the printed information that people call us to send out. All of these things are the way ALF carries out its mission uh, to be able to help people who are in need. So great job, Karen, great job. Karen, our CFO said bravo. Oh, oh, there we go, all right. And you know, when the CFO gets out there and gives you kudos, you know, it's a good thing. So good job, good job there, Karen. All right, Sophie, Sophie, are you ready now? Here we go, time for I'm you ready. to select. 
Okay, let's do liver nutrition 500. Liver nutrition for 500, and here we go. The liver never gets tired of taking nutrients and turning them into this. The liver never gets tired of taking nutrients and turning them into this. Um, I would say like energy or protein. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. You're exactly right. The liver turns nutrients into energy, right? Excellent, good job, perfect answer there. You know, this is why very often if somebody has liver disease, they're going to be tired and they're going to have a lot of fatigue, uh, which is one of the really the symptoms of liver disease. And that's because this function of the liver turning nutrients into energy is interrupted. And so when that happens, the result is going to be fatigue. So, so it's very important that we have good nutrition, especially for those who have liver disease, because they need that energy. And it helps the, the liver to be able to do that. So Sophie, good job on that. Great answer. Great answer. All right. I think we have time to go around the horn one more time. And so let's go to team Kira. All right. We're going to do about ALF for 200. About ALF for 200. What is ALF's vision for the world? What is ALF's vision, which is the key word there, vision for the world um is it a world where there is better treatment options and awareness around liver disease absolutely yes that's a good answer yes the vision is a world without liver disease okay and that's what our vi that's our our 2020 vision everything we do is keeping its its eye out its 2020 vision out to make that happen so good job on that good job all right karen Karen, here we go. This is your, your last chance here. So let's uh, make it a good one. Um, let's go to treatment and cures for 200. Okay, treatment and cures for 200. Karen, what are the two types of liver transplant options? Um, deceased donor and then um, living a living donor. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. Woo! With crowd. Okay, deceased donor and living donor. You know, living donor uh, is becoming used more and more these days. ALF is partnering with a number of institutions to get the word out that people need to, to look into the option of living donor. You know, living donor uh, option is available because of what we talked about before with that unique nature of the liver about its healing and regenerating. And that's why we can take a piece of a healthy liver, transplant that into somebody who needs it. And in both cases, in the donor and in the donee, the liver grows uh, into its proper size and its proper functioning for that person. That's a miracle. That's just an amazing aspect of the liver, what makes this, uh, this organ so special. And that's why we can use the living donor um, process as well. So good job, Karen. Good job there on guessing those two. Okay, Sophie. Sophie, why don't we come down now and let's make your final selection. Let's do patient support 500. Patient support for 500. My son has been a heavy drinker for a while, but he wants to turn his life around. Where can he and I find support specifically for this? Um, I would say again, the ALF website where okay. there's specifically a group for patients who have. He's saying specifically alcohol, I think. I um, <laughs> Sophie, are you getting help? No, I just have some <laughs> funny people talking to me. <laughs> um, I think Sophie's cheating. <laughs> Um, no, but I would say there's a specific part of your website that has a resource for alcoholic um, liver disease. Exactly right. Okay, so as we look at the answer here, we're going to see that two groups specific for that is AA is Alcoholics Anonymous for those people who want to turn their lives around and have a support of people who know the experience have gone through it. And Al-Anon is for their loved ones, for people to, to learn how to support them in the best way possible. So, all right, so great job, everybody. Now we've, we've run out of time. Uh, and so we're gonna move uh, right now to our final Jeopardy question. And 
before we do that, uh, let's check Elise. Let's see if Elise has any updates for us, any shout outs for us. No, everybody's just so great in the comments, cheering you guys on. Kevin Munoz is just giving each of you guys kudos. And, you know, we have about 33 people watching right now, and everybody is just rooting for each of you. This is fantastic. Excellent. Uh, uh, Elise, is uh, Alex getting any love out there? Is uh, maybe a little love for, for the host the here? What do you think? of ALF <laughs> is cheering you on, and the crowd is loving um, Alex Trebek. You know, we are all Team Warren, so do you even have to ask? Everyone excellent. loves you. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, has, has David Ticker said anything about that uh, salary increase there? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he didn't put anything yet. Uh, I, I'll, probably be, I'll, I'll probably be talking to him tomorrow about that. But anyway, this is, this is wonderful. And now here we are. We're into our final Jeopardy question. And so the category is, since its inception... The Liver Life Walks have raised this much in funding for liver disease research and education. We're going to give you some time to think about that. Since its inception, the Liver Life Walks have raised this much in funding for liver disease research and education. Take a few moments and formulate your answer. Warren, David said, go Alex. Kelly sent you a smile. And Francesca <laughs> says, team Warren. Woo! All right, all right. Way Warren, to go. I think, we, I think we need you to sing the, the Jeopardy song now. What is it? Do, 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 <laughs> I don't know if you were watching, but last week on Jeopardy, something happened that has only happened twice in the history of the show. And that was that when it came to final Jeopardy, only one contestant was eligible. The other two contestants went into negative money, and so they could not participate. And so that's only happened twice in the history of Jeopardy that that person went into final Jeopardy uh, all by themselves and actually got the answer right and got like oodles of, <clears throat> oodles of money for, to do that. All right, so now let's go to our contestants and let's see what they come up with for our final Jeopardy answer. And so we're gonna go to Team Kira. Team Kira, how much have the Liver Life Walks raised uh, in funding for liver disease research and education. What would you say? We're going to say about 25 million. Okay. All right. Good, good, good guess there. About 25 million. Karen, what would you say? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 30 million. Okay. Karen's going to say 30 million. Sophie, now, Sophie, I know that finance and accounting is not your particular field. However, what would you say to how much has been raised through all the walks over the years that ALF has sponsored around the country? Um, I am going to guess maybe 5 million because I think the whole foundation has raised about 30 million, but I'm not for sure. <laughs> Okay. All right. So Sophie, Sophie's going in there for the 5 million mark. Okay. So let's see what the answer is. $25,892,258. Team Kira, Team Kira had that answer almost on the nose, almost on the nose. Good for you guys. Karen, you said 30 million. So listen, we're going to put you on the committee now because we want to get this to 30 million. So you're going to be on that committee. Sophie, we're going to tell you stay in medical school. Okay, there we go. All right. So listen, good job, everybody. I don't know. Do we have some tallies here? We do, we do. We have an update right now. It's coming in live, updated points, scores right now. Team Kira, 
2,600 points. Okay. We have Karen at 3,300 points. And we have Sophie at 4,100 points. Woo! Sophie, Sophie, <laughs> great job tonight, Sophie. Great job, great job. And, and, and listen, Sophie, as, as a, a gift, we're going to send you this new five-page brochure that ALF has just put out. As you can see, it's very small. You can carry it in your pocketbook. And uh, we're going to send a copy of this nice little brochure <laughs> to you for being the winner of tonight's Jeopardy. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to our contestants. Thank you to all of you who are out there tonight who have come to support us. Uh, and and we, we want to see you in the future. And this is not over yet. We still got a ways to go until we get to the day of the walk on October 24th. So let's keep making those donations, keep taking those steps. Keep getting people to join on our teams. Okay, thank you very yes. much, Nicolette. I'm going to um, toss it right back to you. Thank you so much, Warren. How fun was that, everyone? I'm so glad you joined us. I hope that really tested your, your liver knowledge. I learned so much. A huge thank you um, to our amazing contestants tonight. You all did phenomenal. You knew so much about the liver. Uh, you were super impressive. And thank you so much again for joining us. A reminder to everyone that's watching that logged in to please donate to support these incredible teams tonight. We're going to be posting the donation links to their teams in the comment section. So you can pick which team you'd like to support and you can donate right to them there. And of course, a big, big thanks to our fantastic host, Warren, aka Alex, for making tonight Woo! so much fun, so educational. Big claps, big cheers. Thank you again to all of you watching and participating online and sharing in the comments section. And the thank you to Bristol Myers Squibb for sponsoring this week's activities for the Virtual Liver Life Walk. To date, we have raised over $122,000 for the Virtual Liver Life Walk, which is amazing. Um, remember, again, we're asking for a $10 suggested donation for tonight's event to help us reach our goal of $250,000 raised for the walk this year. So there's still one more week left of our virtual walk experience. So please make sure you're following us on social media at Liver Life Walk. And our team has been doing updates, uh, weekly update videos each week to recap what went on that week and to get you guys excited about what's coming up in the next week. And just so everybody knows, next week is Spirit Week. So we'll be getting super pumped and sharing some special shout outs to a bunch of very important people next week to get us all excited for walk day, which is on October 24th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be streaming live. Um, so please be sure to join us on walk day. You can watch the live stream directly from our website. We'll be posting all of the details on our social media. So like I said, please be sure to follow us at Liver Life Walk. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great night. Stay safe.